So Ryan, we've been out on the adventure trail today. Yeah. Um, had a brilliant time on on Ducati Desert X's, which man, they were good bikes, weren't they? Super cool. Yeah, I love That's it. it. I've still got mine, and I think still I'm got, supposed we need to, to give have it given it back three hours ago or something <laughs> like that. So, and it yeah, was great. And then uh, you took part. Well, we both took part in the parade. Yeah. When the gates to Ragley opened, well, what was that like for you? It was quite awesome, and in the amazing, true sense of the word, it was it? awe-inspiring. Yep. I kind of tagged on to the back of it because I wanted to see what. I don't know, 2,000 bikers or whatever it was yeah. looked like, and it's it looks like something pretty cool. It was great. Yeah, it? it takes a long time. They were going what, yeah. like three, four wide, and so that snake going up the hill just lasted forever. And, and we, yeah. we we started off together, um, and uh, <laughs> it was me, you, and Bryn from the ABR team. Yeah, thought we'd all ride up together and lost each other almost straight away. Oh, we ended up like 15 minutes apart by the end. Of it. Yeah. yeah, you were right at the back. Bryn was ahead of me, and then we were playing kind of where's Ryan? Yeah, as the uh, the campsite, but yeah, it, it was lost, incredible, right? wasn't it? Really good. Yeah, we had a good day. Very good day. And yeah, it's only the much. first day of the festival. This is the yeah. Thursday VIP night, so yeah. actually the festival proper starts tomorrow. Lots more coming. Yep. Um, but to round off the day, we thought we would treat you to uh, a bit of a an English picnic. Yes, I three I see three plates of brown food, <laughs> so I feel like this is going to be an authentic there. English experience. I and I don't know what I'm looking at uh, for any of it. So yeah, it's not it's not mock the Canadian, but it's introduced you to some of our some of our outdoor eating fare. Because guys with you, families that go out uh, in the summer and find a nice spot to picnic will generally have a selection of these little trees. Okay. So nice. um, it'd be great to have a little chat about YouTube uh, yeah. and Fortnite and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. But to begin with, I think we should pick uh, a little something to start with. Very good. What's what's taking your fancy? All right, I'm going for the uh, <clears throat> very brown. I'm going, I'm in there with you. Uh, spherical object. This is, uh, what are we looking at? I think we're here with a scotch egg. Hmm. Dry. <laughs> Super dry. <laughs> Super dry. <laughs> this is where we're supposed to dunk it in tea or something. Yeah, I think so. Have we got not any water or anything? No. No, nope. no. We'll be coughing our way through. <laughs> so it's basically, what is this, like a deviled egg inside of a... Uh, is there chicken in here? So this is kind of like, this is a mini version of a scotch egg, but I think mm. we've got like sausage meat around the mm. side, some egg in the middle and some breadcrumbs. And it's, um, it's, it's a delight. I'm not sure how many I could eat, mm. but I probably if I had eaten water, many I could do life. a bunch. So to kick that off, we've had a great day. I know a lot of people have been coming up to you saying hello, you know, kind of saying how much they love Fortnite. Mm. Um, you know, one of the world's most popular YouTube channels, so I'm trying to swallow this Scotch egg. That's very kind. I know now talk. we can't talk yeah. because of this yeah. Scotch egg. Try and keep talking until it gets rid of it. <laughs> oh, um, we'll be fine. But it'd be great to find out a little bit how it all started. Um, yeah. Because I know, um, I know. was it right that you were working as a, a, a copywriter or once you come out of university? That's right, yeah. I mean, talking just personally for myself, the story of Fortnite is, you know, much bigger than I am. But uh, for myself, I was uh, writing a bit of freelance stuff for magazines in university. Just answered a job ad. They were looking for a blogger at the time. This company was called Canada's Motorcycle. Uh, never heard of it, but I grew up riding dirt bikes, so the motorcycle connection was there. Um, and yeah, I was doing some some blogging, some writing ad copy, product descriptions. So if you logged on to Canada's Motorcycle and checked out the new showy Neotech or whatever, the description of it would be written by me. Yeah, it's still on there. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, some yeah, of them are still on still there. Around. Yeah, I can tell because I cruise the website sometimes. I'm like, God, who wrote this thing? It's so weird. It's always mine. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I was doing that. And then a few years into it, we started YouTube. Obviously, that was like a joy and just so much fun to do. And we never thought it was going to work out and we'd, we'd get to keep doing it. But yeah. You know, then, so then how did, did the YouTube so. start? Why, why, why does it one day do you think, okay, we've got to do this? Was it, was it a yeah. marketing thing or was it just you fancy giving it a go? Yeah, it was a rebranding thing. So the company was called Canada's Motorcycle, but they grew to the point where they were selling ATV stuff, marine stuff, dirt bike stuff, snowmobile stuff. And so Canada's motorcycle didn't really fit anymore. We needed something broader. So we came up with this name Fort Nine that didn't mean anything. So we got to define it. That's great. Oh, so is Fort but Nine isn't a place or a it's nothing. Location? It means nothing. No, it's oh. an amalgamation of. So in Canada, forts were the original, um, not the original, but very old trading posts. Yeah, well. um, and so we're an e-commerce distributor, so we're a little bit like a trading post. And then 49 is the parallel, like the. Um, the uh, latitude where uh, Canada borders the states. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so uh, it's sort of a play on 49, sort of a play on Fort. Um, but anyway, the name basically means nothing. And so we got <laughs> we got to define it. So it was this broad thing. That's great. But you don't change the name of a website overnight because no one will find it anymore. Yeah. Google won't know what to make of it. Um, and so uh, so we started this YouTube channel that was under the name Fortnite to build up some internet recognition for this word that previously didn't exist. Yeah. Um, and, and we were supposed to run it for you know a few months ahead of the, the website changeover. Um, and uh, it ended up doing quite well to the point that we decided to just keep going with it. And 
Uh, you know, now we've been doing it for six years or something like that. So that's it. Uh, we're quite a ways down the road now. Well, you are. You're, you're hugely successful, aren't you? It's 1.5 million subscribers plus yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. You know, no, lo lots of people love it. I've been watching it, God, five, five, six years now, I think. Oh, I've really enjoyed much. it. Yeah, yeah no, it. it's great. And um, But one thing that strikes me is it doesn't kind of follow trends. You, know, right. you kind of seem to, seem to pick topics that I would never think about covering an adventure bike rider magazine, to be honest with right. you. Uh, yeah. It's like, how do you go about picking those? But first, should we have another little treat? Let's have another Come little on, treat. Another, what are we doing? Are we going question. for the, uh, the brown cylinder or the, the brown I think, I think we go oblong? For the, I think we go for the brown UFO. Okay, that let's is go a for the brown bike. UFO. There you are, Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is another picnic treat. Okay. I think we should dig in. Oh. That's a little moister. Mm. <laughs> I prefer this to the Scotch egg. The pork is nice. Mm. And we magically had some water up here, which is great. Beautiful. One for you there. Thank you very much. So uh, a pork pie, kind of a, I don't know, I always think of it more of a northern, a northern oh, okay. food, the north of England, kind yep. of more popular, but mm. mate, I grew up in, in the southeast in Essex. And gotcha. This was, a, this was a lovely dinner. Right. What's the north of England? Is that like... Yorkshire or f further up in that? I'm not very sure, geographically speaking. I reckon so, yeah. Kind mm. of, we're in the Midlands here, mm. uh, and we're just maybe half an hour south of Birmingham. Mm. Trying not to talk with my mouth full on camera. <laughs> Don't you? Um, not easy. And then you go, yeah, go north. You get up to places like Liverpool, Newcastle, right, okay. kind of mm. Durham, um, places like that. Yeah. And you get to the north of England. And to be honest with you, I grew up in the, in the south. Mm. I really like it. I, I lived in Cornwall for years in the southwest, but for scenery and landscape, the north of England, I think, is, is unrivaled until you get up to Scotland. Absolutely beautiful. Places like the Lake District, mm. Kilder Forest, uh, the Yorkshire Dales, just, oh. just stunning. I'm Great so riding as well. I'm going up there in a few days, as you know. I'm going to be driving right the way up through Scotland, so can't wait to see it. Mm. I've, I've never seen anything north of Cardiff before, so no, it's all going to be pretty new to me. Yeah, it gets more more spectacular yeah, as you go actually, along. I'm not sure I'm going to finish that. Oh man, I crushed mine. You crushed mine. Are you? I think I'm more British. You're than well you ahead now. of me. I think you might works, be. Right? I think you're more northern than me. Mm -hmm. well, that's mm -hmm. it. My pork pie magically disappears. Mm -hmm. um, Amazing. <laughs> that's it. But yeah, I you made a videographer eating that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a hungry cameraman. Let's turn the cameras around. <laughs> bust him. Um, but yeah, I mentioned your videos. They they don't seem to kind of follow a trend, or right. you know, you'll do a video on the Bergman scooter which is like fascinating and something that and i've never seen phenomenal machine to write about or um we kind of how do you how do you why do you pick these subjects and yeah. how do you come up with these ideas i mean they often find us so in the case of obscure vehicles we often you know get an email or a phone call or whatever from someone who says look i've got this really weird thing if you ever want to use it you're more than welcome that's phenomenal like that's that's the best you know just flops in our lap we did one recently about feet forward motorcycles um these weird things where you sit kind of like this um and uh, that literally just fell on us. It was a guy who was nearby on Vancouver Island who builds these things and he offered one up and perfect, you know, there you go. I think the other reason we don't follow trends is because we don't really get press bikes in Western Canada. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of press vehicles in Canada in general because it's a small country. And the ones that are here are usually out in Toronto, which is a long way from Vancouver. It's like the other side of Canada. Yeah, it? it's a yeah. long way. So some Two manufacturers are, are uh, <laughs> yeah, if you were hauling, yeah, yeah, yeah. But most people would take more than that. And, yeah. And so, yeah, manufacturer has to be really kind to actually pack one of these up and send it to us. And a few of them do. Um, but for the most part, we don't get press bikes. So um, we just buy the vehicles that we're interested in. And it usually tends to be motorcycles that are 2 or 20 or 40 years old. And, yeah. and, and to me, that's great because uh, those are the stories that I'm more interested in right. um, uh, anyway. Although new bikes are very cool as well. Okay. Well, talking of new bikes, you've been yeah. looking around the festival here. Mm. Uh, and we've pretty much got every, I think, every major manufacturer in the world here. I've seen them all, bikes. including some that we don't yeah. get in Canada. So. Is it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Is it, uh, how's it? Have you, have you enjoyed sort of looking at those bikes and taking yeah. the, the Desert X for a spin as well? One of yeah. the newest ones. Yeah, yeah, I've enjoyed it immensely. Like, um, I was checking out Benelli's um, CCM, something CCM? like that. Yeah. We don't really get those. British I've brand, seen a think, few, yeah. but yeah, I think they're kind of personal imports or something. Um, uh, new, we don't really get. The electric scooters are just starting to arrive, but um, haven't seen a ton of them. So yeah, I've been walking around and uh, sort of feasting my eyes on, on all the stuff that, uh, that I've never seen before. Desert X was a bike I'd never seen before in the flesh it's pretty uh, special, before today, and now I've had a day on it, you know, riding the adventure <laughs> trail, which is excellent. 
Um, and uh, yeah, immensely enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, you know, I really need, I need to back to back it. You know, I want to ride it right after the T7 and right before the KTM 890 to kind of yeah. like really see where it fits into that picture. Um, but uh, you know, from memory, it's 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 definitely a, a contender and, and maybe taking the cake because it definitely does visually. I know the suspension's better than the Yamaha. It feels as narrow and as nimble as the Yamaha did yeah. from how I remember it. Um, so it's, yeah, it's it's going to be up there. That KTM ride's phenomenal. I know you're a big fan of it, right? You're, Massive. Yeah. I, I adore the 890 Adventure. The 890 Adventure are probably, yeah. I don't know, maybe may my all-time favorite bike. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I That's know awesome. It's not a looker. I know it's not I know I've, I've kind of been world, shitting but... on it all day. Now I feel bad because yeah, I know yeah. you're, you're such a big fan. I do love the way it rides. I just hate yeah. the way it looks. Um, but, you know... It's hard to be negative about any of these bikes because I have so much love for that segment. To me, these are the adventure bikes that we should have had all along. To me, the like the larger adventure bikes have always been kind of wrong for the type of riding <laughs> that people are doing with them. And these ones, you know, 80, 90 horsepower is kind of like right in the sweet zone. Yeah. Even less, 60, 70, and, and the weight and the size is, uh, you know, for me at least, just right. So I've got a love for anything in that kind of uh, yeah, I do you know, hear. I do hear. Although I do love <laughs> packing up the GS. I know, I know. Luggage on the I back, know. my wife on the back, zooming down yeah. to the Alps and just having a thoroughly nice time. I get but it. And I'm fully aware that I'm the minority in that sense. No, you know, no, the, but that's the, the joy of adventure biking, isn't the, it? Yes, yeah, that's lots it. lots of different things, yeah. different folks. Some people yeah. will jump on a, a TRF 250L and, and disappear off around the world and be really happy as well, won't they? Yeah, but yeah. It's, uh, it's all good. It's all good. It's, it's all, all good. Fun. It is, it is. Yeah. So, um, what should we do next? I was hoping you were going to say that. Still hungry? Yeah. Yeah. Right. What are well, we thinking? I feel like we should figure finish off this savory plate here. So yeah. A final. We look. So we've got a brown object of nondescript uh, shape. I'm not going to lie. Here is one of my favorite treats in the world. All right. I'm going to give a you a big roll. piece then. All right. I've, uh, I've eaten far too many of these. Okay. So life. sausage roll. So I this I know. This I know. We, whenever we have lots of these in Canada. Do you? When yeah. I was a kid and my mum used to go out and buy cakes for everyone, I always used to get a sausage roll. It was just a savory treat. That's fantastic, yep. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Just, it tastes like childhood to me. Mm. <laughs> a little bit of mustard, a little bit of ketchup to dip it in. Oh, yeah. yeah. That might add some color, though, treat. so maybe, you know, I don't know, it might ruin the beige thing that you have going on. It might, it might. So sausage rolls are a big thing in Canada, are they? Um, <laughs> yeah, you see them around a lot. Yeah. They're popular, at, yeah, like, I don't know, events like this, ski resorts, you know. Um, stations sometimes it's an easily like hand bombable food so i just i love yeah. the idea of being a some fancy ski resort up somewhere in banff or whistler and you come off and you have a proper <laughs> proper good old english sausage roll super common yeah, yeah. super common oh, no. it probably cost you about 20 bucks but yeah in banff or whistler <laughs> yeah oh yeah they uh they gouge you out there but oh thank you sir cup of tea for you oh mate oh, that's an absolute this dream guy. down the video man so the sausage roll was a hit. We're not sure about the scotch egg. Scotch egg was a bit dry, but maybe this wasn't the best example of the scotch egg. I feel like maybe that was, uh, yeah, might just be a, a one-off or something. The pork pie was a winner. Pork pie was a winner. Yeah. yeah, so far I think it's the pork pie for me. <laughs> cool, I'm cool. A, I'm a pork pie guy. No, I know we've, um, we've been having a chat today about uh, all things Sport 9. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that when you shoot videos, you've got a really small team, which mm. surprises me because, yeah. you know, I think your, your videos on YouTube really stand out for being kind of, well, they're, they're brilliantly written and also wonderfully shot in kind of a cinema, cinemagraphic, is that the word? They've got great cinematography. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do, yeah. It's been a long day. Um, so kind of how do you, how do you create that, that sense yeah. of, of scale mm -hmm. with, with a, such a small team? Is it just the two of you? Yeah, and I mean, first off, it's not me at all. Like I, I do the, the research and the writing and obviously I'm there on camera, but I know nothing about the other side of the camera. Like total technophobe, don't do cameras, don't do editing, you computers, did help with none of that GoPro stuff. Today. You were, you were bit, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, it's it's entirely uh, it's entirely Luke, who's a fantastic shooter and editor. Um, he's you know a big film buff, and he's able to create that really cinematic feel with a really small run and gun kit. Like we're using, you know, little, uh, you know, I don't want to say cheap because it's not cheap, but you know, these cameras are kind of three thousand dollars. They're not the most expensive kit out there. Um, it all fits into backpacks. We can kind of both ride and get into trails and, and shoot. We always say like the best kit is the kit that you're not afraid to break. Cause like the best drone shots don't come from the really fancy drone. It comes from the shitty cheap little drone that you're not afraid to fly six inches above the water yeah. through the canopy, you know, cause you're not worried about losing it. That's the same with cameras, you know, you want to get them down in the puddle and 
you know, put them low on the corner where you can drift around and spray the rocks and not worry about just destroying all of your kit, because that happens. Yeah. Um, and we've broken a lot of stuff, but we like to keep it, you know, um, small. The other reason we do that is most places we film in Canada, you're not really allowed to film. Yeah. Like you need a film permit and then you need insurance and it's really designed for movies and television. So all that stuff costs many hundreds or tens of thousands of dollars. For YouTube channel, it just doesn't make sense. So it's always nice to be two people uh, with a small camera. We look like tourists, you know? Um, and so no one's saying, hey, get out of here. You're not allowed to film here. I love Canada. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. No, we just kind of blend in. Wow. So, um, so yeah, we keep it little. Traditionally, we've always been two. We're still often just two on a shoot. Um, but, uh, you know, to give away a little secret, we're trying to build our team now. Are you? Um, yeah, we're trying there's to add... There's an opening at 4.9. There's openings, yeah. yeah. I mean, we just want to offer more. Like, right now we put out a video every two, three weeks, um, which is great, because we always prioritize, like, the quality. We try not to go for quantity, so we're happy to make people <laughs> people wait a month uh, or six weeks, which sometimes happens when we get stuck in a project, but we're also aware that that's not that great from a viewer's perspective to have to sit so long between videos, so... Yeah, we're trying to add people strategically to try to just, you know, increase our output without affecting the quality at all. So we're still in that process and we don't know how we're going to do it, but yeah. um, that's kind of the main thing we're trying to figure this out. Be this like, is this going to be a different presenter? Is it going to be someone that's uh, not Ryan on screen? I mean, I, I certainly would love or? it to be. Um, really? Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, my love is, is the research and the writing. Like, my happiest days are days when I can do a bunch of research, maybe do some math. Um, dive into some archives, go out on the bike and ride it and test it and write a really cool script and, you know, kind of go into, not storyboarding, Luke does more of that, but kind of shot planning and thinking through styles and some of that stuff. That's my favorite part. The actual shooting days, like being out and getting the shots and grinding, they're brutal, man. Yeah. Yeah, they're really yeah. brutal. I can't complain because I'm still riding bikes for work and that's, that's like that's super it. fun. So I have to say with a smile on my face, but you know, those days are often like 16, 18 hour ride yeah. days. And it looks great on camera and it looks like a lot of fun, but the reality is you ride a tiny bit and then you do it again and then again and then again and yeah. again and then again until you get we shot the camera need. up and down. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a little bit different. Again, not complaining, it's phenomenal fun. Um, but my favorite stuff is is more the writing. So if I could get another host on there, absolutely would. Yeah. 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 I remember yeah. Uh, I was out uh, with a venture bike rider with Bryn, uh, who I, I took over from editing the magazine. Uh, we were up in the Lake District, beautiful place. The rain was pelting it down. We'd been riding for about 12 hours and he just stuck the camera in front of me and was like, let's do a social media update. And yeah, I yeah. was miserable. And go. So we were traveling from the Tan Hill Inn in Yorkshire down to the highest pub in Wales. There was an accident on the M6 motorway, so we took a diversion through the Yorkshire Dells. Usually a wonderful thing to do. As you can see, it's absolutely pissing with rain and we're pretty wet. Um, the views should be spectacular, but we can't see a thing. Um, but I can assure you, if you do this journey in good weather, you'll travel through Yorkshire, you'll experience incredible scenery and have a wonderful time. Just as I am, I'm gonna get back on the bike. You just said to me, yeah. you know, I know it's raining, but you're being paid to ride a motorbike, mate. I was like, yeah, all right, yeah, it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's really not, I'm, I'm getting paid to do something I love, yeah. even in the rain, Yeah, even in the rain. Uh, yeah. You were talking about uh, filming in Canada, and I know you, so you're, you're based in Vancouver, yeah. uh, and I love. I'm a, I'm a self-confessed Canada file. As I told you earlier, yeah, I yeah. love it. I'd spent a bit of time living out there very briefly. Visit as much as I can. Nice. Um, and I'm always fascinated to see where you're filming, whether it's like a bat lock in that lot in Vancouver, yeah. or it's kind of one of the forests nearby. Um, it's stunning. Right. But what do you reckon, sir? to the Ragley Hall Estate compared to that today when we were going oh, for a ride on the, it's the 20 kilometer trail. Yeah. Oh no, I mean, this place is beautiful and this type of thing doesn't exist in Canada at all. No. You know, this estate that's like, I don't even know, how large is this thing like? 300, Julian, our chief bike tester was out with us today. So yeah, it's 398 awesome. acres? That sounds about right, says, yeah. Something like that? I don't know. It's yeah. enormous and yeah, it's, it's manicured and it's all lawns and it's mowed and there's trees, but they're pretty strategically, you know? I think you're saying today <laughs> yeah. that um, there was a designer who, who was came and- Capability Brown? That sounds right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Sort of did it to make it look a little wild, but not too wild, you know? It's like Very if Disney did the English countryside, yeah, isn't and they'd it? Have it would a, be here. A bit of sheep, but there'd be a tr like a hidden trench so they couldn't get too far away. It kind of, you know, like that, that stuff is, is really neat and it makes for a beautiful, you know, backdrop to ride in and something that's totally foreign to me, so. Um, and this was your yeah. first time riding off-road in England, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, first experience of it, so. Felt good. It's a blast, felt really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really good, very different. I was saying, you know, when we were riding, riding on grass is not really possible in Canada, so. No. Yeah, it just, 
doesn't exist. The only grass is on people's lawns, at least where I'm from. Um, and, uh, you know, as soon as you get out in the boonies, places where you can ride, it's either logging roads or trails. Trails are usually dirt or rocks. Um, so, uh, yeah, that not, sounds not like not a lot of Miles and miles of backcountry. But I guess that's the joy of the ABR Festival. We got tons over, of it. Yeah. We've got 20 kilometres to ride, which Plenty. I guess to yourself might not seem a long way. But here in England, our uh, what we call green lanes are off road, well, on road, but uh, unpaved roads are often pretty short. You might yeah. have a mile or two go for a ride on the road and mile or two. So to have 20 kilometers through this magnificent state, it's just a, yeah, it's a good sentence. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, it's a really cool thing to have. I'm hoping to get out there and ride it tomorrow. So. You may hopefully on that Desert X again. That's the plan. I think I saw yeah. you eyeing up a crumpet. I'm eyeing a crumpet. Well, I think we should have gone for the crumpet first because they were toasted and warm when we uh, started them. Have you ever come across a crumpet before? I mean, I didn't know what a crumpet was no. when, when I first heard the word, and I thought it was something you know obscure and exotic. And now that you've brought it out, it looks basically like what we call an English muffin. I, yeah. Which I don't know if that's right or not, but it looks like that. Well, crumpet is also uh, kind of a, an older-fashioned word for an attractive woman in England as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. So if I order a crumpet, I might get. Yeah, not you don't know that. what you're gonna get. Yeah. yeah okay. But we've got. I think we've got one here that's just butter, or I think we might have some marmite. Is that right? Yeah. Dress for Marmite? Down the video, man. Well, I'm definitely going the Marmite. This I'm one looks really Marmite-y. Marmite so Let's do it. Let's do it. And they're, yeah, they're, they're cold. But hey, so you guys I'm to in. add a brown thing to a brown thing. Mm. Brown on beige. Mm. Can't beat it. Mm. Well, they're cold, but they're good. That's really good. I do love a crumpet. And it's not quite an English muffin. At least not the way that they are in Canada. That's like softer and spongier. I'm going to have to go out to Canada and get an English muffin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a different thing. That's really good. I've, I have had Marmite before, I confess. I'm a bit yeah. of a Marmite fan. So. Are you? You're a fan? Yeah. There we go. You make an Englishman of you out. Mm -hmm. Just don't tell your Welsh family. <laughs> yeah, I know. They'll be upset about that. Um, so you said your favorite time mm -hmm. is when you're scripting, researching, mm -hmm. looking up the math and the science. Can you? Yeah. Mm, excuse me. <laughs> Get that crumpet down. Dude. I know. Swallow that crumpet. <laughs> Can you take us through kind of, you know, how you go about that so you've said sort of a little bit about how you how you select your videos mm. what, what what's the process you know how do you work with luke and where are you when you're doing all this mm. we're in our office we have an office in ben where the studio is which is part that people see in the videos and then we have desks um very fancy we have desks. i know you have, I know. Yeah, you have yeah. chairs as well what's that chairs as well we do we do wow. i know wow. we had to squat for the first three years <laughs> yeah. massive calves but uh yeah, the process is, uh, well, we always roll together. So when Luke's editing, I'm usually writing the next video. Um, but it's always like super dialectical, you know, like he's pitching on the script, I'm always pitching in on the edits, like we really work together like that. So um, yeah, he's always aware of the ideas that are coming up ahead of time, because I'm usually like, oh man, like 15, 20 ideas ahead of where we're actually yeah. shooting at. Um, so he kind of knows what's on the horizon. And so I'll say, hey, this is next. I'm going to start diving into this script. So he's like, okay, cool. So he can start thinking about it stylistically, what might match the content. Because that always makes the best videos, you know? Yeah. Like, we've done a few, uh, you know, more investigative topics that we've kind of done film noirs with. And that kind of yeah, fits, yeah. right? Because it's a detective thing. So we try to do that sort of thing, like match the style to the content. Um, so he's thinking about the styles while I'm writing and researching and doing the script. Once that's done, you know, him and I meet. We talk through it all. We plan locations. Um, and shooting days, sort of a rough schedule. Then we go out and, and shoot it. Um, we have our sort of production time together. And then after that, he dives into the edit. He's kind of on his own then, and I'm working on the script for the next one um, until he has a verse cut. Then we watch it together and talk about, ooh, how can we make this better? Maybe we should change this, change that. Second cut, third cut, fourth cut. What's that cut. dynamic like? Is it, is it like with, uh, with our man, Dan the Video Man, where mm. I suggest something and I, I get a withering look and a big huff? Oh. I well, I think because, again, I know nothing about editing and computers, right? So I'm in this kind of like dreamland where I'm like, hey, why don't we just change this and do that? And Luke's like, man, that's not at all possible, you know? Like this, this was shot it's gonna in, cost in grand whatever, grand. like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, my ideas are just, are, are, are completely unreasonable a lot of the time, which is great. He teaches me a lot, um, but uh, he's very patient. He puts up with it and yeah, usually it's kind of, you know, three, four cuts before we're at, you know, the final one. And then yeah. it's immensely satisfying to sit down and, and watch the final yeah. edit together. And Do you have um, like a little viewing party or just the two of you? Not really a party, but because you never know when the final cut's going to be, right? So yeah. we'll kind of, we know we're getting close and we'll say, yeah, you know, let's sit down and watch this cut. And we watch it and we're both loving it. And then we're both kind of look at each other and we're like, this is it, right? Yeah, this is it, you know? And then we know that it's, it's the final one and it's yeah. done. And then 
then that feels really good. Goes up on YouTube. We, you know, uh, usually have video going out a matter of days later because we're always late. And you know, it's it's like school. You know, it's like two days before it's due, we're getting it done, yeah. and um, and then it's on to the next one. So yeah. And always what's it fresh. like now? Because um, you know, you put a video up and immediately there's there's five, ten, twenty thousand people watching it but you've also probably got hundreds and hundreds of people commenting on it and mm -hmm. and some criticism can be quite stinging no matter how how successful you are isn't it's it you know very wounding. but do you, it's very wounding. Yeah. but um is it great to have that interaction with with the people it watch is Fortnite? yeah it's my yeah. favorite thing about youtube is the immediate reaction to videos because we've just finished it we've just finished the final cut and we think yeah this is good you put it up and you have immediately a thousand two thousand responses to it which is brilliant now, back in the day, you had to organize screenings and you do it for maybe a few hundred people and you get some feedback. But here it's like, oh, we may have a few hundred thousand viewings within yeah. the first few days. And so you get all that feedback right away. It's awesome. Keeps you really sharp. If I mess anything up, I know immediately because it's the first thing that people pick <laughs> yeah. out in the comments. It's like, oh, yeah, I really should have done better on that, you know, and uh, researched that more or, or got that right. So it does increase the pressure to be correct, which I think is, is a really healthy and good thing. Yeah. Um, and then... Yeah, just, just uh, I read every comment. I go through them all. Really? Cause, yeah, there's lots of them, but that's really where we learn how we can be better for the next video. Um, most of them, well, most of them, a lot of them are just kind of, you know, wow, this video was great, or hey, this video was shit, and you don't learn much off those, but buried in there, there's loads of comments that, that are really handy. Um, and people say, hey, you should have shown this more, or I wanted to see this, or I wanted to know about that, or why didn't you bring this up? And um, those are the things that, that really inform the next video. Yeah. Yeah. Have any made you cry? Cry? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't cheer up easily. Honestly, I, uh, maybe there was a bit of a curve where I took it personally, but pretty much from day one, it's yeah. it's like right over my head. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't get too bent out of shape about comments. So. It's all right. And yeah. you don't need to finish that crumpet if you don't want to. Oh, I'm finishing it's the crumpet. It's okay, because we've got more to go. The crumpet's delicious. I'll finish the crumpet, <laughs> but tell me what we got next. I'm going to go Well, we're on to the third and final plate, which right. is our... Shortbread, we got some Cadbury's buttons, mm -hmm. and, uh, and the, the English classic. This is pretty much in every child's lunchbox up and down the land. Mm -hmm. It was like a daily daily occurrence for me, which is a penguin. I've never had the penguin. Uh, you never have the penguin. And what was the, what was the other one? So we got shortbread. Shortbread, okay. We got buttons yep. and, uh, and a penguin. I think All we right. should go for the penguin. Let's and, go with the penguin. Part of, part of the, uh, the ritual of having a penguin uh -huh. is reading a joke on the back. There's a joke in here. There's always a joke. I haven't done it in Tell years. Tell me a joke, James. How does a pancake... No, how does a... <laughs> I got that wrong. <laughs> there we go. Give it another try. Uh, it's, it's kind of folded over so I can really have it. How does a penguin make pancakes? I don't know. With its flippers. Flip a pancake. Yeah, I got it's you. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. This joke is actually quite ironic because it would not work in Canada. And it says, I'll, I'll tell it like a Canadian first. Why are penguins shops so busy? Because the fish fillet, which doesn't work. But you would say because uh, the fish fill it, right? Because the fish fill it. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. yeah. It I took me a minute when I read it, I was like, like what? This isn't a joke. Like, how does that make any sense? But, <laughs> because the fish fillet. <laughs> yeah, because the fish fillet. <laughs> I, think, I think penguin needs to change their jokes if they're gonna be in Canada. <laughs> but it is a delicious treat and uh, yeah. Uh, a daily lunch box occurrence. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm. I feel like a school kid in Britain. No, that's it. Mm. So, you and Luke spend an awful lot of time together, creating some great, great content. Thank you. What, right happens for, for, what happens for you outside work? How do you relax? Mm. Is it with motorbikes? Do you get as far away from them as possible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I have a bit of the curse that... Uh, you know, there's that saying, like, whatever, the, the cobbler's kids go shoeless. It's like, you ride bikes all day, and at the end of the day, you don't want to hop on a bike, you know? <laughs> um, which is fine, because I ride bikes all day, and I enjoy the hell out of it. And mm. I spent 12 hours in the saddle, and I go home, and all I want to do is read. Uh, and that's that's pretty much what we do. I yep. have the, the great fortune to be married to a librarian. Um, oh, wonderful. And so books are kind of the passion for both of us, oh, cool. and, and we spend pretty much all our time reading like we were talking about shows earlier, right? Everyone's saying, oh, you gotta watch this, watch that. We don't watch TV. No. Yeah, it's all just all just kind of books. Occasionally movies. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of outdoorsy stuff, like hiking uh, is fantastic oh, in Vancouver. Canada's perfect for that sort of thing. Yeah, well. exactly. Um, you know, where we live, we can go swimming in the cove pretty easy. Um, yeah, skiing in the winter, snowboarding, snowshoeing. 
Um, yeah, Couple all the mountain sports really. Mountain biking. Yep. Um, which is phenomenal training for motorcycling, actually. Oh, really? What yeah. for the thighs? Um, there's a strength element, but also just the like the balance aspect of yeah. it and the sort of reaction time stuff. Everything tends to happen a little quicker, and all your inputs have more effect. Um, so yeah, I find it super useful for for off roading. Like mountain biking seems to be seems to be kind of handy. Cool. You mentioned you're a big reader. What, what are you reading at the moment? Uh, at the moment, I'm reading Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell, which is a fantasy novel. It's not normally the type of thing I read, um, but I read Piranesi, which is um, a book by Susanna Clark. I think it's Susanna Clark, same author. Um, and Piranesi is fantastically good. Um, yeah, so I just was so impressed with it that I went on to read her next one. Nice. But, uh, yeah, went through the Hilary Mantel trilogy recently, which is all the books about Thomas Cromwell. Oh, yeah. Um, which was kind of cool before coming to the UK because there's all these spots that are yeah. relevant yeah. to his story and stuff. And man, those books are phenomenal too. Um, but uh, yeah, I could talk. I, uh, I could talk to you for hours about books. Well, because I was, I was the hell out of all the viewers talking but. to you about one of my favorite books. It's actually, a, a book mm. that some melting chocolate. A book that my dad um, passed on to me. Um, Jupiter's Travels mm. uh, by Ted Simon, and we've got uh, Ted Simon's bike. Um, up on the concourse, we've got, right. a, yeah. we've got a, a concourse here at the ABR Festival of, of vintage, interesting, retro, uh, and just fascinating bikes. And, and Ted, uh, who you hadn't come across before, mm -hmm. right. Ted rode around the world, I think it was 1977 for four years, uh, and he's, he's kind of a living legend mm -hmm. uh, here to adventure bikers here in ABR, uh, here in, in England. Uh, and Ted's going to be on the main stage this weekend giving a talk. That's awesome. Uh, and yeah. for me, it was just, just I don't know, almost, uh, almost quite awe-inspiring just seeing Ted's bike yeah and actually seeing and that's the that's the bike he rode around the yeah. world was was quite fascinating but I'd 100% add that to your list because Ted's a, a, a beautiful writer you yeah know, yeah I have to check that out fantastic. Jupiter's Travels you said right? Jupiter's Travels yeah yeah, yeah. he's uh yeah. he's he's here tomorrow and it's worth worth catching up with him yeah I hope to catch really him you're saying guy. he's like 90 years old is that right I think he's I think he's probably in his 80s now late 80s yeah maybe 80s. I'm not quite sure yeah but um yeah just a fascinating character and a hero to a lot of people and I Every time I meet him, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit starstruck. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, oh, it's Ted Simon. Oh my God, that's incredible. But uh, yeah, but it's yeah. exciting. And is it uh, is it annoying being married to a librarian who's probably always better read than you? She's always better read than <laughs> I. You no, know, it's honestly quite handy. We read most of the same stuff. Like we're always passing books between us, um, and so it's brilliant. I don't have to think about it too much. Yeah. Um, when I finish one book, I can go to the shelves, and she's like, oh, that was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. You gotta read that. You gotta read this. It's great. Yeah. Nice stuff. She does all the work for me. That's it. All right. Two more left. We're going to make our way through it. We don't right. have to eat them all. I'm We're going to pop a button because buttons pop a I button. I recently oh, did you get bought, buttons in Canada? Well, I recently bought a part for my... I've got an old TT350, um, and uh, I bought a part for it from a seller in the UK, mm. and they sent me the part, and there were buttons in it. Oh. They threw in a pack of buttons, so I know buttons. That's customer service. Right oh, I, know. There and then. I was so excited. Definitely go back to those guys. Mm. I shouldn't have mentioned it because if my wife watches this, she's going to be really pissed. Because she loves buttons. buttons, and I didn't bring them home. <laughs> yeah. You'll be in trouble. Yeah. Well, mate, so um, you were saying that you work 10, 15 ideas ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what's next for you guys? Can mm -hmm. you give us a sneak peek? Mm -hmm. Depending on when this video goes out, it might, be, uh, <laughs> yeah. it might not be as uh, peaky as, as we'd like, but this Saturday we've got a video coming out about the KLR 650, oh, yeah. which is um, a very iconic bike in North America, uh, single cylinder, Adventure bike. The new one's basically the same as the old one. They just fuel injected it to make it a little more emissions friendly. Yeah. Um, so we got a little vignette on that bike. It's only like three minutes long, three minutes twenty seconds long, something like that. Um, and we cut it all to a score. So we we got a song first and basically scripted to this piece of music. So it's a bit of a different video for us. I'm curious to see how it goes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we got that. Um, we've already wrapped on a backpack uh, review and a tire review for this year. Um, and we wrapped on a video on uh, why and when to stand up on your motorcycle. Um, because there's a lot of misunderstanding about that. A lot of people say, oh, it lowers the center of gravity because it moves your weight from the seat to the foot pegs which from a physics standpoint is complete bullshit and ah. not at all right. Um, and so the video is a lot about debunking that, but replacing it with a physically correct notion of what's actually going on uh, and then using that to explain when you should stand up on your adventure bike and when you shouldn't. So those are just the videos that are done and in the can and yep. in the process of being edited. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it at that and keep the rest surprises. Keep it a surprise. And for you, it's Thursday night here at the ABR Festival. Is mm -hmm. Three, three and a bit days to go. Mm. Uh, what, what's your plan for the festival? I know you're you're on stage uh, mm. a couple of times, aren't you? Yeah, 
Yeah, I've got, um, I think, a chat with uh, Simon and Lisa yeah, uh, to ride the world. Ride the world They've guys, been yeah. just going around the world nonstop forever. Um, who seem like fascinating people. And it's going to be hard They're not really to just ask fun. them questions because yeah. I just want to ask them about what they do. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got a chat with them. Uh, I think I've got a, a chat briefly with Ducati about the Desert X that they've yep. been kind enough to lend me, um, which should be a lot of fun. I'm giving a, a master class, which is your name for it because it sounds kind of hoity-toity if I say I'm giving a master class. <laughs> um, but I'm giving a so-called master class on uh, how to succeed on YouTube. Um, and I think I'm doing one other thing. I think we're chatting, right? That? By the what campfire. We're talking even more. I think we are. I think, we're, I think we're doing this again. No. It's been all day. Oh, it'll be fine. I've poor, old, poor Ryan, we've been hooked up with uh, Intercoms all day. And <laughs> I hadn't realized I'm so bad at it. But I, when I get on and off a bike, I just groan so yeah. much. I know, I heard a lot of old man noises. <laughs> oh, and it's my wife on the intercom. I, I, I just, she must take it for granted. <laughs> but as someone I've just met today, and I'm just groaning into, um, into his ear. It's weird to be in someone else's head. I don't normally ride with a calm, so it was, I had to check myself. Because normally in my helmet, I'm doing all kinds of weird things. Like I'm singing and I'm saying random shit. And yeah. I do a lot of accents in my helmet for some reason. Do you? Do you? Tons, yeah. What's your favorite? Um, <laughs> Southern American, it's just, actually. It's not going to be vaguely, yeah. vaguely kind of xenophobic. No, no, no. <laughs> it's like Southern U.S. Like, I've done a bit of traveling down there, and the accents are phenomenal. Oh, mate, I wish you busted out some accents to today. It could have gone along yeah, with my old no, man grown. We had mics on. If, if it, I went online, I would have been, like, canceled or something. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fair enough. So, yeah, we're going uh, to have a chat uh, on stage as part of a, a live live version of the ABR Garage, the podcast yeah. that we do at Venture Bike Rider. I think I'm right in thinking that we're filming that as well. So oh, awesome. look it up yeah. online uh, if you want to hear me, um, Bryn from Adventure Bi Bike Rider and Brian, just talking about bikes in general, really. Uh, Very good. I know you mentioned that you script everything in your videos. I do. Today has been the complete opposite of that. <laughs> so yes. we'll probably our live stage oh, show as well. It's a challenge for me, man. I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't talk well off the cuff. I'm a pretty shy person in real life. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, all the unscripted stuff is, is challenging for me. But it's been fun. It has. You've made it, it very easy. Mate, I'm glad. Yeah. I mean, thank you so much for joining us. But we're, we're not finished yet. We've got one more to go. No, I was hoping you weren't going to uh, forget because I was craving go for a little the, bit of shortbread. We're going to go for the shortbread. Yeah. It's, uh, I can see the sugar on it already. Uh, mm? Mm? It's just, it's creamy. It's good. Yeah. It's sugary. It's sweet. Is it's that a little... dipper as well? Would people dip that Mate, in tea? Get, get, get dipping. I wish like I hadn't drunk all my tea. dry. It's quite dry, isn't it? Oh, man. But you can hear music in the background. Mm. Um, the party's getting started here. I did see a photo of you yesterday. Um, I don't think it made social media, mm. but of you uh, and a colleague of ours at ABR Will on stage. Were, oh, you, yeah. were you guys, because last night you, you stayed over, but the, the festival was empty. Mm. Were you actually singing on stage? Will was. Was he? <laughs> Not me, I'm a terrible singing voice, but yeah. We were here the day before the event. Cool experience to be in a place that's set up for 10,000 people, and there's two of us here. Yep, yep. Just walking around, being in all these empty places, going up on the stage, like all the little kid stuff, you know? That's it. Yeah, it was tremendous fun. We've got Dr. Feelgood playing tonight, who I've heard about this, yeah. Rhythm and Blues Band. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alan, who, who founded Adventure Bike Rider, he's a huge fan of them. Excellent. Uh, and they're from uh, the next couple of towns along from where right. I grew up, so yeah. it'd be great to see those guys. Cool. Um, and just, yeah, what's, what's the plan for the next few days apart from speaking? Just to get riding, get oh, yeah. the music? Yeah, I'm just food. hoping to ride, I'm going to eat. No, I just meet lots of people, you know? We are. Everyone here is super friendly, like so welcoming. Um, so yeah, really just chatting with people is kind of the, the thing I'm looking for. It's the highlight yeah. of the trip for me. So. Well, mate, it's been a great day. It's been a really good first day. You've made it a fantastic first day of the festival for me. Thank you. Uh, and the rest of the team. And uh, yeah, looking forward to having a great Thank time you. over the next few days. Yeah. It'd be great. But thanks for the chat. Appreciate it. Thank Cheers. you very much. Cheers. Hello, adventure bike riders. If you were at the ABR festival last year, then you know how sweet it was, you know, that I wanted to come back. Well, this is my happy announcement that I'm going to be back. And they've invited me to come 23rd to 25th of June, 2023. And it's going to be back at Ragley Hall in Warwickshire. Maybe I pronounced that slightly better this time. I'm going to do some talking on the main stage, the campfire stages. So hopefully you'll see it. There.